Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. Welcome to the best emulation, open source, gaming, and tech news channel on YouTube. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about PSP emulation with PPSSPP, and PPSSPP has yet another update. They're up to version 1.16.4. What's crazy about this is that less than a week ago, they released version 1.16.2. It contained a whole bunch of bug fixes. And just a few days ago, they released version 1.16.3, again containing a whole bunch of bug fixes. And today's release, version 1.16.4, contains more bug fixes than the last two releases combined. And on top of that, it appears this latest version has more than just bug fixes in it. There may be some optimizations and some performance improvements. You may want to check it out. In fact, they've even released more versions since 1.16.4. The development team is on fire. Next up, we're talking about Bandai Wonderswan emulation on the Nintendo DS and DSi and 3DS with Nitro Swan, and version 0.63 just dropped. So this version has some bug fixes and optimizations. It's 100% free, it's open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. And speaking about Bandai, next up, we're talking about a game that might not yet be on your radar, but if you're a fan of the Dragon Ball Z style of art, or if you're just a fan of some interesting story, quirky characters, and interesting combat, Sandland has a brand new trailer. To be honest with you, I recommend checking out this trailer. It looks like a very interesting game based on a Japanese manga. If you have heard about this game before, let me know in the comments below. Normally, I like to think I'm on top of things when it comes to news, but sometimes things slip through the cracks and I miss things. And I'm wondering how long this game was announced before I actually found out about it. And for those curious, it's coming out for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and also PC. Unfortunately, no word on whether or not it's coming out for Switch. And speaking about games that haven't released yet, next up we're talking about a game that never got to see the light of day until very recently. This is Crash vs. Spyro Racing. It's for the Xbox, it's a prototype, and Modern Vintage Gamer has just released it. If you are curious about this one, I recommend checking out MVG's video, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. There's a very interesting story behind it, and the prototype is dated March 4, 2004, and it is up on the Internet Archive. I'll drop a link to it in the description below in the event that you wanted to learn more about it. Moving on, and we're talking about something absolutely insane, and something I still can't wrap my head around. It's an ultra-rare N64 Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut Blockbuster Purchase Receipt. It's a receipt up for auction on eBay, and the current bid is $650 Canadian. Absolutely nuts. That's about $483 American for a frickin' piece of paper. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to it in the description below and feel free to check it out, but I wouldn't recommend bidding on it. I'm not going to tell you what to do, though, if you really wanted to. I guess go ahead. It's your money. Or not your money after you spend it. Anyways, here the receipt is from Scarborough, Ontario, and it's dated 1999. The price they paid was $28.74. And if we take a look here, this is the baffling thing. There were 48 bids overall on this. Next up, we're talking about the Nintendo Switch and Red Dead Redemption 2. And if you wanted to see this game on the Switch, it appears your dream is about to come true. Now, there are a couple of things that I'm not quite sure about. Number one, I don't know when the release date is. Number two, I don't know if this is for the current gen Switch or for the next gen Switch, whatever that's going to be called. And number three, I don't think that this is cloud gaming. I think this is going to be an actual release because as far as I know, Brazil doesn't do Nintendo Switch cloud games. I could be wrong though, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but based on this image, it's already looking better than MK1 on the Switch. Moving on, and we're still talking about Switch games, kind of, because this is no longer gonna be a Switch game. Ballistic NG is not gonna be ported to the Switch anymore thanks to Unity. So here's a blog post right from the developers. Like everything I talk about, link is in the description below. It says the Switch port is canceled. Despite Unity's efforts to recover after their PR disaster, there just isn't any trust and security for us to continue moving forward 
with newer versions of their tools in the foreseeable future. They then go on to say they're sorry that it has turned out this way and they'll be looking at working with the console or the rumored Switch 2 in a future project not bound by Unity. So it appears that the Unity fallout continues here, and I'm not surprised. But moving on and still talking about the Switch, and next up we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation with Yuzu, and Yuzu just got a brand new update. Now we talked about this one just the other day when it was a part of the paid testing early access version of Yuzu, and now it's a part of the free mainline build, and this is huge. As of mainline 1568, it allows users to boot the LLE Me applet. Users can now create me with the applet and freely use them in games that have me functionality. For example, games such as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Miitopia, Mario Golf Super Rush, Me functionality is now fully functional. And on top of that, users can also carry me that are registered on Amiibo by reading the Amiibo using the Direct Joy Procon driver. The applet can be opened by clicking on Tools and Open Me Editor in windowed mode. And the paid testing early access version of Yuzu also got a brand new update to 3896 which fixes some stuff in Vulkan. It fixes Mortal Kombat 1's main menu, it fixes Pinball FX3, and it fixes Fate Extella title screen that was not rendering. Moving on, and we're still talking about Switch emulation, but switching over to Ryujinx. And Ryujinx also got a number of updates. For Avalonia here, there is an update that significantly speeds up Avalonia's main window startup time. For Mac, there are a couple of updates, one that fixes soft locks and infinite loading screens with hypervisor enabled, in Bravely Default 2, Life is Strange, True Colors, and Persona 5. Also on Mac, in version 1.1.1029, there's an attempt to fix a rare crash that was reported in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And not on Mac here, in version 1.1.1030. There's a fix here for AMD GPUs in Puyo Puyo Tetris. Next up here, we're really quickly talking about Linux, and Chaos Linux has just released their stable September build, 2023.09. This one is using KDE Plasma 5.27.8. Now, if you're more interested in Plasma 6, there is a Plasma 6 preview ISO already available, and they say here they're one step closer to getting off X11 and basically towards Wayland. Next up, we're talking about Mastodon on Linux. And if you are using Mastodon on Linux and you wanted a client, Tuba may suit your needs. This one got a brand new update for some UI tweaks. It's 100% free, it's open source, and it's on Flathub. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up here, we're talking about Analog. And today, Analog announced some brand new versions of the Analog Pocket some more limited editions available in very limited quantities. So we've got some transparent colors here. We've got clear, smoke, blue, green, orange, purple, and red. And this comes hot off the heels of their glow-in-the-dark model, again priced at 250 bucks. Now they say they're releasing on September 29th with a quantity of two per person, and I'm going to assume a whole bunch of scalpers are gonna buy them and put them up for sale on eBay. I could be wrong though, but I'm probably not. And this announcement has not been met with a lot of positivity from a lot of people. A lot of people, I would argue, are a little bit frustrated with analog. Now, don't take this one the wrong way because I'm just reporting the news here. But as far as I know, they still haven't fixed the cartridge slot on the back. The cartridges still sit in there a little loosely. And a lot of people are frustrated because there's another limited release. They don't know why these are coming out in limited small batches and making it difficult to purchase. I'm assuming they're doing this to either one, sell out, or possibly two, parts are hard to get and they can only make them in small batches. I'm leaning towards option one though. They always want them to sell out. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about PS1 emulation on Android with EPSXE, and EPSXE just got a brand new update. So we've got a whole bunch of fixes here, several bugs in scope storage support for Android 11, a crash detecting Xbox game pads, change disc in Metal Gear Solid VR, menu music in Ghost in the Shell, glitched polygons in Crash Bash, Soul Reaver, and more. Next up, we're talking about PS4 emulation with FPPS4, and if you haven't checked the compatibility list lately, you may want to give it a look. So as of this video, and this list is updated every 20 minutes, 254 games are listed as booting. 
88 get into the menus, 117 get in game, and 91 are now listed as playable. Now FPPS4 is still in very early stages of development. You're not going to see massive AAA games listed as playable just yet. But if you wanted to check out the compatibility list and see what's there, I'll drop a link in the description below. Moving on, and if you're a fan of Mario Kart 7, you may want to take a look at this. CTGP7 Network, a custom replacement online server for CTGP7 players, is now available. So they say here the custom server is powered by Pretendo and it will be responsible for hosting CTWW races and countdown mode from now on, instead of relying on Nintendo Network. Also, due to the increased amount of hackers found in Nintendo Network, a CTGP7 Network also provides vanilla races and battles with other mod users with increased security and anti-cheat. Those who may be unaware, CTGP7 stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, and it's a mod pack for Mario Kart 7. It adds new tracks, new characters, extra features, and more. And I'll drop a link to it in the description below. There's literally everything you need to know here. And yes, it's compatible with Citra. Moving on, and we're talking about Sony, and it appears that Sony has been hacked again. I'll drop a link to this article in the description below, and feel free to check it out. It says, Ransom VC Group claims hack on all of Sony systems. And this is where things get interesting. They say we have successfully compromised all of Sony systems. We won't ransom them. We will sell the data due to Sony not wanting to pay. Data is for sale. And then this site says that there are less than 6,000 files altogether, and apparently they're going to be released on September 28th. At this point in time, we don't have further details of the hack. We don't know if personal information is involved or anything yet, and Sony hasn't said a word, as far as I know. I guess we'll find out on September 28th. And last up here, we're talking about Ioneo, and someone went to Tokyo Game Show and took a video of every single Ioneo device there. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and feel free to check it out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state. <laughs>